mercy. I don't ever want to come into his presence without an offering of praise. I don't ever want to be guilty of standing in the presence of God in all his goodness and not bringing forth the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excellent is thy greatness, how wonderful he is. Hallelujah, nobody, nobody, nobody like my Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise, praise God. Anybody life changed when you went down in the water in Jesus' name? Anybody say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now? Praise God. I'll tell you the truth. We've already had more church in this one service than I had in 15 years in a denominational place. Growing up without the Holy Ghost. And I'm just, I just gotta tell you, I'm just glad they let me in. I'll do anything I got to do to stay in. I'm just glad they let me in. I'm so glad to be a part of you and what God's doing in your life. I'm so glad to be a part of the kingdom of God. Praise God. Praise God. When you think about where we might be if we weren't in the house of the Lord. We appreciate Brother and Sister King and their children. And the wonderful blessing that they are to us. And I look at them and I just think about how awesome that church in Sacramento is. And the ministry it's sending out. And what it's building and how it's radiating out. And who knows how far it will go. And uh, these folks are a wonderful example of the ministry at Sacramento and Brother Nathaniel Wilson. And uh, we appreciate them, appreciate them coming so far to be with us in the house of God and to help us have understanding and knowledge and wisdom. The scripture said, by wisdom you build a house, and by understanding you establish it. And by knowledge you just fill it full of beautiful and precious, wonderful things. And we appreciate him coming by and bringing us wisdom and understanding and knowledge because we want our homes to be pleasing to God. Praise God. And I want him to come tonight and just take his liberty and uh, just do whatever the Holy Ghost has laid on your heart. If you, if you want to have him sing, you want to have Sister King preach, you want to have the guys swallow swords and <laughs> whatever you want to do, you just do it. Yes, sir. We're glad to have it. Let's That's good. Praise God. Well, living for God is a party. It really is. And this, uh, this church exemplifies that. The leadership exemplifies that. I love to watch Sister Sutton just dance in the Holy Ghost. I, I mean that. She just... She just makes me want to want to shout. Praise God. Many of you do believe me. It's awesome. Well, uh, y'all may be seated for a second. Uh, my wife, uh, if she could come up here, I would like her to testify. And uh, my wife, 21 years of marriage, and it just gets, excuse the grammar, but it gets gooder and gooder. I think I just heard him say, y'all. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, truth be known, I actually asked to testify. Because it would be wrong of me not to thank you. You began my testimony for me. Um, the place that we were born and raised is to my... There's no two ways about it. The best place in the world. Now, you disagree with me, and that's right. But I think, and I feel, that the Rock Church and that Daniel Wilson are the best thing, best people, other than Jesus and my husband that came into my life. 
to be raised there, to be living for God 20, almost 22 years, has been the biggest blessing. God only knows where I would be today. I might not even be here today if it weren't for the mercy of the Lord lifting me up. And then we brought beautiful children into the world, did our best, did our best, prayed daily for God to have mercy on our ignorance because there was a lot of that, a lot of ignorance. But he did have mercy, and Brother Wilson said one day, you need to write a book. It wasn't our idea. I want you to know it wasn't our idea. It was his. And when your pastor says to do something, you do what he says. Amen? <laughs> okay. And so that is what we did. Not knowing at the time, and honestly, Brother Wilson said, Tim, Kirsten, I won't tell you what I see for you because I'm afraid if you saw what I see right now, you wouldn't do what I've asked you to do. And he's probably right because the scariest thing in the world was in my mind, in my human thought process, was to pick up my five treasures that God has entrusted me and my husband to carry with us to glory away from what I felt was the safe haven that I had been given which was our home church. That's my shepherd. And these are my baby sheep. And it was a very scary thing. Because, and Brother Wilson said once to Tim and I, I know that you can sacrifice. We know how to sacrifice. But these guys have never had a sacrifice. They've never had that toughness and roughness that we came out of. And, and the, just the stuff. And they're filled you know, on a daily basis in their own private prayer time, but to come together as a body with such a powerful revelation of praise as we have in Sacramento. And I, I'm getting somewhere. I'm not just praising and going on about that. But to take them from that, knowing the power of corporate praise and the power of the revelation of corporate worship, it was a scary thing, but we trust Jesus, and we know he sees farther than we do. His word is a lamp unto our feet, which unfortunately does not mean that I can see the end of the path. It's a it's a step-by-step, step and it's a faith walk for all of us. And it was a faith walk to leave our beautiful home and our family and all my mamas in the Lord and all my brothers and sisters and all my children's friends and to leave. But I'm saying this, in my heart tonight, I rejoice that there are places, and this is chief among them, where I feel so grateful that I've brought them to a place where they can be filled. You know, they, 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 they pour out their cup as they go places. And it's a scary thing. Imagine a book about parenting and days about parenting and having to be them. <laughs> How no fun. I mean, they're still kids, and they still do kid stuff. But they've done it, and I want to thank you in front of everybody. I am so proud of my children. I'm so thankful for them. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm also thankful to you for your generosity, for your open hearts. You have not just opened your home and opened your church, and opened your basketball court, and your kitchen, and everything else to us. But you've opened your hearts to us, and we have felt that. And we have felt, though we've only been here days, we have felt at home. And our cups have been filled. And I'm so thankful to you for that. You know, living for God in my in my es simple little illustration is like riding a, a carousel and I know we've all ridden a carousel those that stand on the outside of the carousel they're constantly pulled out as it spins around by the pull of, of, the, of gravity they, they want to be torn, pulled off but when they stand to the center closest to the middle it's very easy to just ride it up and down and wave as you go by it's just it's a nice, easy ride. And that's how it is living for God. And you have that revelation. And if you don't have it, get it today. If you're new, get it today. 
that the closer you get to the center, the farther you go in, aban- you know, forget all the junk, forget all the stuff. The farther you get to the center of living for God, the easier, the more joyful, the more incredible the journey is. I thank you today so much for allowing us to be here and for making us feel at home and for helping for helping us to be refreshed and uh, and being able to exercise the joy of the Lord. Lord bless you. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Sister Emily, my daughter, would you come up, honey, and sing to the glory of the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. This, uh, before you start the track, um, this really could be considered a prayer for us tonight before, before I minister the word. So consider this a prayer. To feel you, to. Work. 
This is my earnest plea to know you. I live my life just to Holy Ghost is here. Praise God. He's been here all evening. Jesus, we love you. We love you. Well, let's all stand for the reading of the word. And I'm going to read out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses starting in verse 12. And uh, it is a little bit of reading here, but just bear with me. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Going on in verses 28 through 31, it basically talks about the, the fivefold ministry and that God gave the church first apostles and prophets and teachers and, and all of the other members of the, of the body um, after that miracles and gifts of healings and helps and, and governments and diversities of tongues. And the Bible even says, are all apostles... Are all prophets, are all teachers? No. It, obviously, by the, the question, it's rhetorical. It's, it's saying it because it implies that it's not so. Um, are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Speaking of interpretation and things, not initially receiving the Holy Ghost. But do all interpret? Um, it's just, it's wanting us to realize that there's many, many parts of the body. And we all have many different gifts. And there's, it's important for understand, to understand where we fit in the body. 
If we, if we know where we fit in the body, we are a comfortable, we're comfortable in who we are. I'm comfortable in my skin if I, knew, if I know where I fit in the body. And you're comfortable in your skin if you know where you fit in the body. We all strive to, to, to do more. God exalts in His time. But where we are, where we are, it's important that we're, we do our best where we are. It's important to understand how complex the body is. And uh, the way I could relate that is that many times the physical parallels the spiritual. You can see many times in the spiritual what can happen in the physical, the, the world around us. And, and even Paul relates the body in many ways, like he's, he's relating here, how the eye and the head and the members of the body all, you know, it's, it's talking about the complexity of, of the body of Christ. But let's look at how complex the human body is, and then we'll go back to the church body. The average human heart pumps over a thousand gallons of blood a day, over 55 million gallons in a lifetime, to fill 13 super tankers. It's enough, enough blood. It never sleeps, beating 2.5 billion times in a lifetime. In one hour, it produces enough energy to raise one ton of weight from the ground. The doctor would probably know a lot of these statistics. The average adult is made up of 100 trillion cells. Our brain is more complex than the most powerful computer with over 100 billion nerve cells. Our lungs inhale over 2 million liters of air every day without thinking, and and the surface area of the lungs are approximately the same as a tennis court. The lungs contain 1,000 miles of capillaries, and the process of exchanging oxygen for carbon dioxide is so complicated that it is more difficult to exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide than for a man to be shot out of a cannon and to carve out the Lord's Prayer on the the head of a pin as he passes by. That's how complex that process is. Except for the brain cells, 50 million of the cells in your body have died and been replaced with others all at the time it takes me to tell you that. That's how fast um, the, the body is replenishing itself and doing all these complex things without even us thinking about it. In one square inch of the skin, there are four yards of nerve fibers, 1,300 nerve cells, 9,000 nerve endings, 36 heat sensors, 100 sweat glands, 3 million cells, and 3 yards of blood vessels, not to mention many other things that I could mention. The liver is often called the body's chemical factory. Scientists have counted over 500 functions of the liver alone. If two-thirds of the liver is removed from the from the from the body because of trauma or disease, it will grow back to its original size in four weeks. Our sense of touch is more refined than any device ever created. We give birth to a hundred billion red cells every day. We have over 600 miles, um, uh, 600 muscles in the body. It's interesting, we use 15 for smiling and 43 for frowning. So it's a lot easier just to Uh, smile than it does to frown. Use a lot less muscle. The big toe is actually one of the most important elements within the body as it balances the skeleton and enables us to move smoothly. If you were walking without it, you'd simply fall over. That's how it counters and balances the body. DNA contains about 2,000 genes per chromosome. 1.8 meters of DNA are folded in each cell nucleus. A cell nucleus is six microns long. I can't pinch that tight. 30, and, and it's the equivalent of, of 30 miles of fishing line in the, in the pit of a cherry. That's, that's how much, how much um, is in that mic, the nucleus in the micron. Um, 30 miles of fishing line in a cherry pit, that's the equivalent of it. And it isn't stuffed in either. It's neatly folded. If folded one way, it becomes a skin cell. If folded another way, it becomes a liver cell. Folded another way, it becomes a, ki- becomes a kidney cell. So it's just the complexity of even how it's folded in our bodies. To write out the information in one cell would take 300 books, each volume 500 pages thick. The human body contains enough DNA that if stretched out, it would circle the sun 260 times. 
Our bodies use energy efficiently. If I rode, if, me personally, if I rode a bike one hour at 10 miles per hour, my body would use the amount of energy contained in three ounces of carbohydrates. If a car were this efficient with gasoline, it'd get 900 miles to the gallon. Boy, I'd love for somebody to discover that. <laughs> Especially in my truck, pulling that fifth wheel. An eyelash lives about 150 days before it falls out. Your brain sends messages at a rate of 240 miles per hour. Is this all interesting to you? I, I'm, I'm interested in this kind of stuff. It's normal to lose 100 hairs per day from the scalp. Well, some of us lose more than that. <laughs> you blink your eyes about 20,000 times a day. Your blood travels 60,000 miles per day on its journey through the body. Research has shown that, the guilt, that guilt, just guilt, damages your immune system by lowering your immunoglobulin levels. We don't want to be guilty. That's why we repent. And we, that's why church is so awesome. It heals the body, even the physical body. So everybody said the human body is complex. Well, so is the church body. So is the church body. The body of Christ. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into that one Spirit. You know, the Bible is pretty clear about this. There's two classes of people in the New Testament. There's the Jew and the Gentile. And there is no different class of, of po poverty and rich and, and color and creed and, and nationality. None of those things exist. You're either saved or you're unsaved. All of our blood runs red. There is no difference between you and I. It doesn't matter if we're fat or we're skinny or we're... Uh, a different color or we're, we have a different a creed or we have a different nationality. It doesn't matter if we're, we have, um, it just doesn't matter about all the different types of people there are. We're all one body. Many members, but we're one body. He doesn't even care about family name. He doesn't care, your, care about your heritage. Uh, he doesn't care whether you're healthy or unhealthy. If you're raised in church or not raised in church, we're all level at the foot of the cross. That's what I love about God. Everything's level with Him. He loves us all. He loves us all. For the body is not one member but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Do you see yourself as less important than someone else? Brother King, I just don't feel I just don't feel like I'm doing anything for God. I just don't feel very important in the house of God or or there's other people that that seem to be more important than me. You know, we um my wife and I have been counseling for a long time and one thing we see a lot in in our counseling sessions or we've seen a lot in our counseling sessions and that is that People come in and you think, boy, you know, they look like they have it all together and, and everything looks fine on the outside, but they still suffer from, from in, you know, just thinking that they're less than what they are as a king and priest in the kingdom of God. If we could ever get all of us as members realize who we are in Christ. And I, I think Brother Sutton mentioned that the other night. We're kings and priests and we're, we're special. We're, we're, um, we're just, we're chosen. We're a chosen people. And uh, he loves us. Instead of wishing we were so-and-so. I wish I was brother so-and-so because, you know, he gives Bible studies and, and he does this thing and, 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 and he does that. We have a crisis of identity sometimes. Rather than being who we are in the body. Being who we are in the body. Can you deny who you are? I can't deny who I am. I mean, I, I'm Tim King. I, I come from a certain home. I, all those, I, I'm a certain color. I'm a certain, but I'm a child of God. That's who I am. I can't deny that. I'm a child of God. 
If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the, the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased Him. That's the important point. You know, there's, there's a lot of points I want to make tonight, but that's a, a biggie. That it pleases God to put the members, every one of them, in their special place. And, and if we could learn to be content where we are and do the best we can where we are. The body runs smoothly and it functions smoothly. It's where, we, where we not, we're not comfortable with who we are. And we're not functioning in that place like, like we should. That we're not, you know, we're not functioning as, as the body wants it, as it pleases Him. And I cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. It's so easy sometimes to condescend. Well, I'm, you know, I'm doing this in the, in the kingdom of God, but that person, you know, you know what is she doing? She's, she's, she's raising three kids and she doesn't, I mean, all she does is, is, is stay home with her kids and doesn't do anything in the house. Nuh-uh. We're all ha- we all have an important place in the kingdom of God. That, that, that little lady, whether she's a mother staying home with her children, um, married to her uh, husband, or a single parent, she is vital in the kingdom. She's a vital member in the kingdom. If she's elderly, she's vital in the kingdom. There is no big eyes and little U's in the kingdom. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, we think a lot of things. And we sometimes think that some people are just have less honor than others because maybe somebody's singing, maybe somebody's preaching, maybe somebody gives testimony and that. There's people that don't feel real comfortable in those positions. So it's easy for us to sometimes bestow less honor on them. But God doesn't see it that way. Upon these, the Bible says, we bestow more abundant honor. How about that? God's not fair. He sees sometimes that there's somebody that prays two hours a day and nobody sees it. It's a part of the body that nobody sees, but it's so vital to the rest of the body. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. What that means is our our parts that aren't that beautiful, really to God, are very beautiful. Look at the pancreas, for example. I don't even know what it looks like, actually. It's probably pretty slimy, pretty ugly looking, if you were to pull it out and look at it. Anybody know what a pancreas looks like? (laughs) No, wrong question. There was somebody who could answer that. You never see it. We don't talk about the great job it did today, regulating your blood sugar and doing all the other things it does. Some may not even know it's, it's there day after day, faithfully doing its job. And we don't see it. We don't even, we don't know it's doing its job, but it's doing it. And um, it would be an ugly and slimy thing to look at. Again, like I said, it would be, uh, again, I couldn't probably draw it out, but it would be probably smelly, wouldn't, wouldn't look too good to look at. Not too, it would be uncomely. It wouldn't be the most beautiful member. However, if it's not functioning properly, our health is jeopardized. I mean, it's big time, jeopardized. Um, our, uh, my pastor's daughter, Rebecca, now Bre- Rebecca Salters, uh, contra- I mean, she developed diabetes and it was the brittle kind. I think it's called fragile or brittle diabetes at 12 years old. She, uh, because of this, she had to give herself shots every single day. And because of the family and the importance of the ministry and the pull and, and she was young and, and, and not sometimes diligent. Um, it was difficult. It was difficult for her to control that diabetes, and so at a young age, she um, she was at the point of death many, many times in her youth. The point of death many times, all because of her all because her pancreas was not functioning correctly. She had repeated eye surgeries. In fact, now I think because of the many eye surgeries she's had, the doctors say she could not have any more. Up to a couple of years ago, she could not have any more eye surgeries just to be able to see. And she would have blindness because of, that pan- because of the pancreas. Because one member was not functioning correctly. Just one member was not functioning. This young lady was, was um, possibly going to be blind. 
She had circulation, her circulation in her legs and feet were, were, were not functioning correctly, correctly. In fact, she had what's called neuropathy. The nerves were dying in her feet, all because of one uncomely member in her body not functioning correctly. The kidneys were damaged. 20 to 30 percent, um, the last c- couple of years ago, they were down to 20 to 30 percent of, of full functioning. They were, they were dying. All because of one member that wasn't functioning correctly. One member was not functioning correctly. A couple of years ago, her body began shutting down. She tested for donors. They tested for donors for the kidney. The pancreas now has affected other members, and the the kidney needed to be uh, transplanted. And at that time, Brother Wilson and and Sister Young and Doug, her husband, were all fighting over who were going to... donate a kidney now you can't donate a pancreas because it, it has to come out of a cadaver it comes out of you, somebody that's dead has to say on their little card i donate body parts that's where a pan that's how vital the pancreas is you just can't get it from somebody you know oh, i want to give you my pancreas it doesn't work that way so anyway they fought about it and they all tested the they they had to test them, make sure that everything was right. They had to be a, a family member and be around that person for a long time. And the blood had to be right. Everything had to be right. Well, Brother Wilson was, I mean, he, here, this is a very important man on this last day. And uh, everybody was a little concerned about him opening his body and, and donating something that could affect him and his health. And we need somebody like that around for a long time. So there was some debate about that. And Sister Young, the wife of, of Pastor Miles Young, who was taken over at church, that was another issue. So they kind of lost the argument a little bit. And Doug, her husband, won. And they wrote about it in the paper, actually, that a husband donated his kidney to his wife. And uh, it was successful. One year later, in fact, one year later, after the kidney transplant, they found a donor um, that had passed away in a car accident or whatever and donated the pancreas. All because one member, and you don't even know it's there. You don't know it's functioning properly every day. All because one member, all this took place in a, in a young lady's life. And just two years ago, from 12 to 30, I, don't, I forget how old, it affected her health. One member. And sometimes we think some members are less honorable than others. We're to have love one for another and respect everyone where they are in their position in the kingdom brother wilson used to say this he said listen the saint that's faithfully coming to church and sitting on the pew is an important vital member of this church important vital member of this church to god less beautiful is more beautiful to him to be rich is to be poor in spirit to god He sees it all just opposite. Less is more. He makes something from nothing. That's what God does. Something from nothing. I just look at my life. He made something from nothing. Man sees the outward beauty. God sees the heart and the uncomely parts. The less beautiful he sees. Man respects intelligence. God rewards wisdom above all. And that wisdom first is to seek Him. In this church, every member is important. Everyone has their function. The stay-at-home mom, like I said earlier, is important in the house of God. They're raising the next generation. We are seeing what's happened in this generation by mothers not being there for their children. That's an important... And sometimes they're working night... I mean, morning to dusk. I know, I have five children and my wife worked... From the from beginning of the day to the end of the day, and it didn't stop. And uh, she worked inside the home very, very hard. And um, she, didn't, she didn't have a lot of time to do things, give Bible studies, or uh, be ch- a Sunday school teacher, those things. But she was doing a good job raising a family that are going to live for God in the house of God and being faithful. The elderly... The elderly are extremely important. They bring the sage wisdom. They bring counsel. They bring, listen, 
Elderly people have been through things that can teach us. We just have, need to have ears to hear and eyes to see. And to respect the elderly and let them know how they're a feeble member. But God says they're beautiful in the kingdom. They're beautiful in the body. If you're a man of God that comes to this church and you work long hours because you may be a doctor, a lawyer, a, a candlestick maker, whatever you might be. But if you work long hours, you're taking care of your family, you're paying your tithe and giving in the offering, being faithful to the house of God. You're a vital member in the, in the kingdom and, and in the church body. That there be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all members rejoice with it. When an organ is not right or hurt, the whole body feels it. The whole body. Just stub your toe and tell me if it doesn't affect everything. Your whole body feels it. It's the same in the kingdom. When one person is feeling, when, when, there's, when there's rejoicing, we rejoice. But when one mourns and there's one sick, we, we're, we mourn with that body member. That's a healthy body, Brother Sutton. In communion, the Bible says we discern the Lord's body. It says to discern the Lord's body before, ta- body before taking communion. Meaning if we have odd against someone, make it right, or we drink damnation and sickness to us. That's what discerning the Lord's body is. We look around and we think, did I offend a brother? Did I, did I hurt somebody? Have I not made it right with my, my mom, my dad, my child, my pastor? Whoever it is, have I not made it right? That's important to discern the Lord's body. Ephesians 2.21, In whom all the building fitly framed together grow unto an holy temple. It's all fitly framed together. The, 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 the body members are all coming together. You know what's neat about this body? Is that it's not complete. It's not complete until he comes back. So the new pe- person that... out in the pew, sitting out there wanting to be a member of this church, wanting to be a member of the Lord's body, you're welcome to be an important member of this church. The body says, submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. I remember my grandfather in his sage wisdom. He said this, he said, Timmer, you can call me Timmer, never meet a person that's not superior to you in some way. Never meet somebody that's not superior to you in some way. And what that taught me was that it doesn't matter who they are in their, their economic state, their race, their color, their, their, where they are in, in, uh, in where, wherever they are, you always be quick to listen and slow to speak. And you're going to learn something from that person. Whether they're old or they're young, whoever they are, be quick to listen. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all, all, of you, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resist, resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you.